Welcome to the Old Miner's Meanderance, a podcast about cooking, outdoor cooking. We'll talk about various forms of grilling, barbecue, smoking, and give some tips on fine indoor cooking as well. You can find the text version of these podcasts at minersmix.wordpress.com. These casts are brought to you by the folks at Miner's Mix, makers of fine gourmet barbecue rubs and seasonings. If it didn't exist in 1850, it ain't in there. Feel free to visit us at minersmix.com or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Tumblr. You can find this podcast on the Miners Mix YouTube channel at anchor.fm slash minersmix or on many other podcast outlets. You can find our products on Amazon or on our website. Now, gather around to hear Fish On! The Grill. An explanatory note before we begin. Most of these podcasts are verbal versions of what we've posted out on our written blog. Out there, the old miner himself often writes blog entries. He usually writes from the first person singular case. That is, he says, I do this or I did that. Here in the podcast, that just sounds funny. So we often change things up to the first person plural case. That is, we say we where he said I. This episode is just such an example. Now, onward. People who claim they don't like fish have never had good fish. This blog entry will tell you how to make good fish. A lot of folks are scared to grill fish the way it was meant to be grilled, which means on the grill. We've never seen anyone seal up rib steaks in foil and then put them on the grill. We think even the best USDA prime rib steak done this way would pale in comparison to an even an average steak when grilled in the normal way. So why do you do it with fish? Fish takes a little more skill to grill than your average steak and that's why folks are afraid of doing it the right way, which again is directly on the grill. In actual fact, there's no reason why most fish can't be put directly on that grill just like everything else. Aluminum foil is really popular and so are planks, but we've never cooked fish on a shingle and we see no reason to do so when we know how to cook it directly on the grill. Foil and shingles are popular because folks think the fish will flake apart and fall through the grill into the coal or burners below. Well, you might lose a morsel here and there to the charcoal below, There's only a few types of fish we have ever tried to cook that were dang near impossible to grill successfully right on the grill. We'd much rather give up a bite or two to the angel's share than wrap our fish in foil and call it grilled. Might as well bake the thing in the oven if you wrap it in foil. Fish grilled directly over the coals or even on a gas grill tastes so much better than the same fish sealed in foil. Aromatically sealed, In foil, the fish doesn't get any of the caramelization and flavor that normally would acquire from the fire and the searing that goes on while cooking. There are a couple of tools necessary to do a really great job on grilling fish, and some kinds of fish are more amenable to direct grilling than some other kinds of fish. Through experience, we've encountered a few species which are difficult or darn near impossible to grill, and some that are really easy. Plus, some cuts of fish are easier than others to grill. If you don't really want to lose any fish to the angel's share, then you should invest in a fish basket. A fish basket is a flat, two-sided basket made from closely spaced wire mesh into which you can put your fish, latch the basket closed, and then put it on the grill. When it comes time to turn the fish, all you have to do is flip the basket over. Fish, when properly done in a fish basket, comes out great. When we cook fish, we put it right on the grill. Fish needs a coating of oil to avoid sticking to the grill, which is why Miner's Mix Salmon Marinade is such a great product for fish. Blend that packet with soy sauce, vinegar, and olive oil, and soak your fish for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then grill it. The marinade works wonderfully with all fish. We even get eye rolls and an OMG with the lowly tilapia, for example. The old miner does quite a bit of salmon and buys fillets with the skin on at local shopping warehouse. He used to fish long-range boats off Baja, California, and he's really picky about his fish. 
Those big warehouses are best because they have a very high turnover, so your fish is fresh. If your fish smells fishy, or worse, tastes fishy, then it's not fresh. We stay away from grocery stores and put the same old fillets out there day after day on ice for a week or more. Or worse yet, wrap that fillet with a stretch wrap in a styrofoam container and set it next to the beef. After marinating, place the fish on the grill skin side down if you're using salmon fillets. With catfish, tilapia, or many other fish, there's usually no skin. If cooking fish steaks, then just leave the skin on to hold the meat together. If directly on the grill, sans fish basket, place the fillet perpendicular to or across the grill wires, not parallel to the wires. This is an important consideration when it comes time to flip that fish. Let the fish grill for four to five minutes or maybe even a little longer if the fire is not real hot. Time to flip the fish. We have a big old spatula with a blade about 10 inches wide. If you don't have a big wide fish spatula, use two regular ones. You need to support the fillet over most of its length. It's important for the spatulas to have flat, not rounded or beveled blades. Cooked fish is fragile. If the blade is rounded, when you angle the spatula to slip it under the fish, there'll be a gap at the blade left and right, and that'll tear up the fragment of the fillet. With a quick sharp motion, flip the spatula or if using both hands with two spatulas, then angle the blades up near vertical and then with a gentle motion roll the fish over onto the other side. You might lose a bite or two of this fish to the angel's share anyway. Once flipped, if it's done enough, you should be able to effortlessly peel the skin cleanly off the fillet. We use tongs or sometimes a spatula to get a piece of skin up so then we can pull it up with our fingers. After the skin's off, drizzle a little more marinade onto the fresh surface. Ahi, albacore, and other tunas tend to hold together fairly well, and they'll stand up to a little rougher treatment. In texture, tuna is more like a steak than a fish. Easiest of all are tuna steaks, or any other fish steak for that matter. The skin holds them together in a nice meat package really well, but you still want to use the spatula roll technique when flipping them over. Rockfish and red snapper fillets are intermediate. They're quite a bit more flaky and tend to fall apart easier than salmon and might be better candidates for that fish grilling basket we talked about. Whole fish such as trout grill easily and the skin will peel off just like with a salmon fillet if you want skinless trout. About the only fish that's ever defeated us is Dover's sole. This stuff just falls apart if you look at it wrong. A definite grill basket candidate for sure. Fish is done when it feels done. It'll be flaky and separate easily. It cooks quickly, so don't go far away when you're grilling fish. Dover sole, being incredibly flaky, remains soft and maybe a little mushy even when cooked completely through. Fish is considered cooked when it's in the range of 120 to 145 degrees Fahrenheit, according to online sources. However, since folks eat it raw, we guess it could be considered cooked just as soon as it comes out of the water. In general, fish will be a little less soft when it's done, and with fillets, the thinner sections will be done before the thicker sections are done. You'll develop a sense of feeling it with the spatula to determine whether or not it's done. Have a good time with fish, and thanks for joining us today.